we want to simplify the given expression. And when we have an expression like this in fraction form, we want to simplify the numerator and denominator separately, and then we'll deal with the fraction last. So looking at our numerator, we want to determine this difference here. And notice that we're subtracting a negative. Well, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So let's go ahead and rewrite this down here as negative 12.9 plus positive 4.15. So now we're adding decimals with different signs. And hopefully we can see right away that the negative 12.9 is going to outweigh the positive 4.15. So this sum is actually going to be negative. But to determine the sum, we actually have to subtract the absolute values of these two numbers. And we'll be subtracting the smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. So notice that negative 12.9 is going to have the larger absolute value. That would be positive 12.9. So we're going to have positive 12.9 minus the absolute value of 4.15, which is just 4.15. So now we'll determine this difference, but again, we know that the result of this sum has to be negative. So let's add a zero here in the hundredths place value, and then bring the decimal down into our difference. So we have to borrow from the nine. This would be eight, and this would be 10. 10 minus five is five. Eight minus one is seven. And here we have 12 minus four, that would be eight. But remember, we know this sum has to be negative, so it's going to be negative 8.75. So now we know the numerator is negative 8.75. And now let's simplify the denominator. Well, the denominator is 0 0.5 squared, which means 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. And since both of these have one decimal place, one plus one is two, this product must contain two decimal places. So now that we know that, five times five is equal to 25. But again, since we have to have two decimal places, we'll move the decimal point to the left two places, one, two. So this product is 0.25, which is normally written as 0 0.25. If a decimal is less than one, we normally put a zero in the one's place value. Okay, now the last step here is to determine this quotient. But before we do that, notice that we have a negative divided by a positive, so this quotient is going to be negative. So now that we know the sign of this quotient, we can go ahead and divide, ignoring the signs. So let's go ahead and erase this over here. We'll set this up as long division. So we'll have 8.75 divided by 0.25. When performing long division, we want our divisor to be a whole number. So we need to move the decimal point to the right two places. And we can do this as long as we do the same to the dividend. So one, two, and now we move the decimal point up into our quotient and divide as we normally would. And if we need to, we can add zeros to the right of the decimal point. So we'll start by asking how many 25s there are in 87. Well, that would be three because three times 25 is equal to 75. If we subtract here, this is 12. And 12 is less than 25, so we know the three is correct. Now we bring down the five. Now we want to know how many 25s are on 125. Well, that's five. Five times 25 is 125. So we subtract, and this difference is zero. And we've used all the digits, so we're done, which means this quotient here is 35. But remember, we already said this quotient had to be negative, so all of this simplifies to negative 35. Okay, I hope you found this example helpful.